Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be covering how to set up object storage with Vulture. And basically, you can use this tutorial on pretty much any other uh, smaller cloud computing platform. Uh, this will hold true for Linode, um, DigitalOcean, OVH, UpCloud, pretty much uh, all of them, I believe, uh, that have at least implemented object storage so far. But before we begin, I did want to quickly mention that I have a referral link in the description and that if you use that to sign up for a Vulture account right now, you do get two weeks of uh, credit with that being $100. And after those two weeks, your credit will expire and you get to choose if you want to continue using the platform or not. But let's go ahead and get started. So once you log into your Vulture account, you're going to want to make sure you're on the products page. From here, you're going to want to go over to the blue plus over here, hover over that, and then you're going to want to click Add Object Storage. One important thing to note about Vulture is that their object storage is only available in five locations right now. So if you need something that's a little more flexible and has more locations, Vulture probably isn't the right choice for you at the time. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and click New Jersey, and I'm going to label this YouTube. Pretty much just label this uh, what's relevant to you. Keep in mind this is uh, meant for storage. Okay, and as we could see, the object storage is deploying now. And I will see you once this has finished. After about 30 seconds, you should see the status of your object storage go from installing to ready. Now we can actually connect to the object storage, create buckets, upload files, you know, make it useful, make it work for us. But before we begin, we're going to have to install the requisite tools that we need to do this. So if you're on Windows, you can go ahead and head over to s3tools.org and install a command called s3 command. This tool is completely free. It's freeware. Uh, you do not have to pay for it like a lot of tools out there that are also designed to do this. On Mac, I will offer you a shortcut, however, and all you have to do is simply type brew install s3 command in the terminal. In the case that you do not have brew installed, you could simply go to brew.sh and copy and paste this command also in your terminal. And after that's installed, you will be able to simply run the brew install command or sorry, brew install s3 command. So after we have that done, uh, we can go ahead and configure s3 command to work with our object storage. To do this, you can simply type s3 command space dash dash configure. And we're going to want to go back to Vulture and copy our access key. You can get this by clicking into your object storage, copy access key, open the, turner, open the terminal, paste that, and we'll just go back and forth here. Secret key, paste, default region, that's fine. Now for the endpoint, you're, good, you're simply just going to want to copy the host name here, paste that there. And so here, it's a, it's a tiny bit tricky, I do admit. You're going to want to type percentage bucket s for plurality dot ewr1. Uh, so you, you, you do want to note that the ewr1 here will be replaced with whatever uh, data center you're using. In my case, I was using New Jersey, and that just happens to be the subdomain here. Anyways, after that, you just want to type dot vulture objects dot com. Enter. And I'm not going to be encrypting my files that I upload, so I will leave this blank for now. Skip, skip, skip. And yes, we would like to test with the supplied credentials. As you can see, that worked. And let's go ahead and save by clicking Y. Okay, now with that saved, we can now create a bucket within our object storage. A bucket is simply just a means of categorizing uh, data you want to upload to object storage. There are more advanced things you can do with this, like access control lists and stuff like that. But since this is a beginner's tutorial, uh, we won't be getting into that. So to create our bucket, you can type S3 command space MB for make bucket. And now we have to supply a URI uh, for S3 compatibility, so that's just going to simply be prefixed with S3 colon forward slash forward slash, and now we can provide the bucket name. And to note, 
on Vulture, your bucket name does have to be unique. So I'm just going to name mine YouTube dash NW. And as you can see, our bucket was created. To verify, we could simply go into the Vulture UI here and click buckets, refresh the page. And as you can see, our bucket is created. However, there are no files in our bucket. So let's go ahead and test the file upload. First, I'm going to create a test file by running touch test.txt. Then I'm going to open it with Vim, add a string of text, save that. And now we can use the S3 command to upload that file to our new bucket. To do this, you can type S3 command, put file name. Now we need to specify the S3 URI. You do this with S3 colon forward slash forward slash. And now here we specify the file name we want it to be in S3. Or excuse me, first, first we specify the bucket with the bucket name we just created. Now we specify the file name that we want the local file to be put into. And in my case, I want it to be the same thing. So I'll specify test.txt again. Click enter and we get an invalid command. And that is because I did not specify put file. So I'm going to arrow up to my previous command, navigate back here and put file there. And uh, now what's it complaining about? Of course, it is lowercase. As you can see, we did get a successful upload and you can now see our file in the object storage on Vulture. Now keep in mind, you can upload all sorts of files. You can upload videos, images, pretty much uh, whatever you could think of, you can upload it. You can create subdirectories in your buckets and subdirectories of the subdirectories and the upload into that. It's pretty dynamic. And the nice thing about object storage is that it's quick, it's fast, it's quick to do writes, it's fast to do updates and uploads. And yeah. And to finish the video off, I will show you how to download a file or folder from your bucket. So to do this, we once again want to type S3 command, this time specifying git, then the URL here, S3 forward slash, or S3 colon forward slash forward slash, bucket name, file name. And then we want to specify the local file here. And since I already have a local file called test.txt, I will call this one youtube.txt. And as you can see, we successfully downloaded the file into youtube.txt. And to verify, I will go ahead and output that file. And as we can see, we got our hello world here. Woohoo! If you have any questions, concerns, comments, the like, uh, you ran into problems, etc., please feel free to leave that in the comments below. I will do my best to help you out. Uh, if you gained anything out of this content, please leave a like, subscribe, you know, what everyone says. Um, thanks for watching.